Hello, it's me, and you see in front of you what appears to be a 2 by 3 by 4 which is only appropriate as we're in the midst of talking about um, uh, cuboids. This, of course, is a brick cuboid, and it appears to be fully functional. This moves, this moves, this moves, and this moves. And, uh, oh, yeah, this moves, and this moves. Now, those of you who recognize this puzzle understand where I'm about to go with this because you recognize there's an internal bandaging that happens with this puzzle. And this happens after you make a um, shape-shifting turn. So like all bricks, you turn 180 degrees in this direction, but you can turn 90 degrees in this direction and uh, actually go about a shape-shifting turn. The interesting thing about this is when you scramble it, because of the internal mechanism, it bandages, which means sometimes things get locked up. So to show you what I mean, let's say you're doing your scramble, and I've gone through two by three by four scrambles before and solves before, as well as a parody situation, so none of that should be a mystery to anyone right now. But what is a mystery is the fact that as you're doing this, let's say you minding your own business, you decide to do a shape-shifting scramble, you come up over here, come across here, turn, turn. So we're going to go through the process of getting this back. Um, uh, I'm going to start defining things based on the terminal edge. So this is actually going to be uh, the orange and blue side, which means I have to get the other orange here. So I'm ignoring the middle parts here. So orange and blue, orange and green, and this over here, this is going to be red and blue, and this is going to be red and green. So I've defined a middle segment, which is basically, or middle layer, which is going to um, define the rest of the puzzle. So what goes on the bottom? Well, let's say white goes on the bottom. Or, or does it? Well, if white goes on the bottom, let's see what has to happen. If this is orange, this is orange, this would have to be green if this is yellow, which means that uh, this is indeed going to be the white bottom over here. And I can prove that by basically turning it across here, and you can see that this matches up. White, um, orange, white, and green match up over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do swaps to move things into place, and I'm defining it based on the terminal end here. So this over here is the white, blue, and orange, which is going to go over here. So treating this whole thing as an edge, we go 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R, so this is in. Again, we ignore this. That's going to come with our 180 degree versions of it. We did create something of a placement issue here, so I'm going to keep this middle in front of me. This is the middle membrane here. I'm, I'm just doing this domino style. So we have this over here. We'll move this here. This is going to be the red and blue, which is going to be right behind us. This over here, believe it or not, this is going to become, this is actually the red part because we have placement issues. So I'm going to move this over here, and this should put this where it's supposed to be here. 2R U, 2R UI, 2R. So you think, great. We have ourselves back in the cuboid form. Uh, we see what we have up here is everything indeed in. Well, this is in, this is in, and this is in. So you can see uh, this is the blue, uh, the orange, blue, and yellow. So all these are in. But as you try to turn it, we're blocked. This can turn, but this can't turn. We're blocked. How did that happen? Well, according to the puzzle manufacturers, it appeared that they did this on purpose. Which I guess I can believe. I'm a little skeptical of that because it seems very strange that there should be an internal bandaging which you can't see. Which means that by getting this puzzle, we're supposed to be able to solve this as is. We're supposed to be able to figure our way around it. But it seems rather daunting because if I could look in and see where the bandaging is, then I can plan around it. But I'm actually put in a position where I can't plan around it. So how am I going to solve this like this? Well, in life, what you're going to find is you get things that are unexpected. If you bought this puzzle, expecting a fully functional 2x3x4, um, you're going to get something a little different than what you expected. It's going to have some bandaging that really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But that is what you've got. Now, there is a way of taking this apart using another one, which for some reason has a completely different color scheme, and um, ravaging the internal structures of this and placing it in that, which we can go over at some point. But is there a way to solve this pretty much as is? And the answer is yes, there is. So I'm going to go through how to solve this with the bandaging in place.
And what if this is going to take us some trial and error, and it's going to take a slightly different type of strategy. So here's something to notice in terms of the symmetry of this puzzle. What you notice, what we're going to be doing is we're going to, we're really going to have to convert this into these being edges, and convert it into a two by two by three. By two by two, these two are going to be together, these two are going to be together, these two and these two. So we're going to have a two by two by three. And that's how we're going to have to solve this. Now to do that, I have to make sure that I get all of these together. And there are a couple configurations that you're going to notice. Some of them are already going to be in, such as this one. Some of them are going to be out, such as this one. Here's what we're going to want to end up with. What you're going to want to end up with, what you're going to want to get, is you're going to want to get four of these, uh, because there's going to be eight of these collective corners uh, altogether. You're going to want to get four of them in and four of them out. And you're also going to want to get a situation where you have all three of the center pieces in, but the very terminal center out. The reason that you're going to do that is you're going to, in one final fell swoop, fix the four corners that are out, and the one edge piece that's in. So this is actually a pretty good configuration over here. I'm gonna turn this over, well, turn this like so. So this is in and this is in over here, so that's pretty good. Now this can turn over here and this can't. Now you wanna to try to identify where the bandaging is. When I turn this over here, this moves freely, this doesn't. What's bandaging it? Could be this one, this one, this one, or this one, or it could be two. Well, if I turn it over here, I find this doesn't move, so it must be here somewhere. This one now turns. So it's somewhere here, that's the culprit. Is it this one or this one? Well, let's move it over here. You find that this doesn't turn, and this does, which means this is the culprit. This is the one that contains the bandaging. So what you wanna do is you wanna have at least one side which can bandage, and let's count the number of ones that are in and the number of ones that are out. Sometimes you'll have six in and two out, or you'll have six out and two in. In this case, we have one, uh, two. So by staying away from this, I need to turn this in a way to where I organize it to where there's four in and four out, but I gotta be careful. If I turn it, say like this, I'm gonna find that I've now got this one in and this one in, one, oh, I'm sorry, this one in, this one is in now, but I took one out, so I've got once again, two out. But I gotta be careful because I can't make it to where all of them are solved. I'm gonna end up with a parity that I can't solve. So what I'm gonna do, knowing that this is the problem here, let's try turning it over here and seeing what happens. Turn it over here, and what I have is I have one in, two in, so it's pretty much the same kind of thing. So I'm gonna now move it like this, which just frees up these to do what they've gotta do. So I'm gonna turn it here, and this is what I like, and I'll tell you why. This is in one, this is in two, this is in three, this is in four. I've got four in and four out, and I've got these terminal ends that are also out. That's exactly what I want to have happen. Because now what I need to do is I need to take all of my four that are in and put them all on the same side, and all of my ones that are out and put them on the same side and fix them all at the same time. So I'm gonna turn this like so, what I have is these four are out, and these two are in, and now I have to turn it up, but I can't turn it back. So, how am I gonna take the bandage out? And this is where the process of trial and error comes from. Get it to this position. Now in order to take the, um, the bandaging out, I have to put it into a shape-shifted form and back into a shape-shifted form. So use the algorithm of your choice. What the algorithm uh, can do is, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a corner swap. To do a corner swap, I'll have it shape-shifted, then I'll just corner swap it back. And then it'll reconfigure things. Let's be sure of where the problem is. The problem is within one of these two. So I'm gonna just do a corner swap with this and this, and then immediately turn it back, and just see if it frees it up. 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R, turn, turn, 2R, UI, 2R, U, 2R, turn it back. All right, now just put it back. 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R. Turn, turn, 2R, UI, 2R, U, 2R, turn it back. Nope, nothing yet, but this is still reset over here. 
Um, what I'm also, what I'm, another way that you can do this, uh, you just have to keep doing it until it's eventually freed up. Now here's what you can do to make it faster. Turn it over here and do the corner swapping with these guys because this might free this up accidentally. This one you don't care if, it, if, if it's not freed up because as you can see we only have one more move to go. So we'll go like 2R U, 2R UI, 2R, UI D, 2R UI, 2R U, 2R, move it back. Now before corner swapping it, let's see if it freed this up. Not yet, so do it again. 2R U, 2R UI, 2R, turn, turn. 2R, UI, 2R, U, 2R, turn it back, and nothing yet. So we don't seem to be making much ground with this. 2R, U, UI, 2R, turn, turn. 2R, UI, 2R, U, 2R, turn it back, and not yet. 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R, turn, turn. 2R, UI, 2R, U, 2R, turn it back and still nothing. 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R, turn, turn. 2R, UI, 2R, U, 2R, turn. 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R, turn, turn. 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R, turn, and aha! So this did it. You do it enough times, eventually it's gonna do it, turn it, and you find it you find that you put everything back in. So to put this in, we have to recalibrate with this. As long as we have all these solved and all, and all these solved, I can treat these as a two by two by um, two by two by three. So this white end actually has to come down here. So I'm going to move this over here. The white, red, and um, green is going to come down here to our U, to our UI, to our. Now I don't care what shape shifts at this point uh, because it's all fine. This is actually red, not orange, but it's been um, um, it's been uh, uh, misplaced. So I've got the red and green and white. So now I'll put this here and do the orange and green and white, which goes here to our. U, 2R, UI, 2R, move this in. So you can see we're getting closer and closer. Over here, we need the white, blue, and orange, which is here, oh, which is here. This, this blue has to line up with this. 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R. And now finally, this has to come into here, where this whole thing is gonna be red. This is just misplaced here. 2R, U, 2R, UI 2R, turn it back, our bottom layer is placed. Now we just have to corner swap the top to get it where it needs to be. This is fine, I need to move the um, other orange one here to here, so I'm just gonna corner swap these two. 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R, UI, DI, 2R, UI, 2R, U, 2R. That moves over here, so this is fine. Now I just have to corner swap these two for this red, blue, and orange to come over here. 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R, turn, turn, 2R, UI, 2R, U, 2R, and you did it. So, you have conquered MF8's very strange bandaged puzzle. At the end of the day, this moves freely now and this doesn't, but who cares? You got it. So that's how you do it. It's really just a matter of converting it into a uh, two by two by three. You do that by setting up where you have four in and four out, and then you have make sure you have one out over here and line it up and just keep doing some shape shifting algorithm, get it in and back until it matches up. And eventually you'll, you'll do it. A little bit of an interesting variation, but that's how you solve problems in life. Take things that are unexpected and conquer it anyway, despite the challenges. Let's go through another quick scenario here, because uh, that might have seemed to have come together too easily. So the first step is, uh, let's go ahead and get it back to the cuboid form. And to be absolutely honest with you, you don't even need to do tops and bottoms. You don't even have to do it the way you normally do it. So let's just go ahead and get it to a cuboid form. What I need is I need something that, that comes into here. It'll be this one. Doesn't really matter to me um, which, which one it is. Uh, I just need something to flip down to here. I'm looking at like a 2x2x3 two by two by right now. 2R, U, 2R, UI, eh, we stop over there. So let's let's take stock in what we've got. I'm going to turn this over here so that I have three in here and one out, like we were talking about. You can see that this moves just fine here. This happens to be bandaged. 
This is in, that's one. This is in, that's two. And that's it. Once again, we have two in and uh, two out. This is all we can turn, so let's just see what happens when I turn it like this. Um, I end up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, what do you know about that? I end up with seven that are out and only one that's in. That's interesting. Didn't know it could work out that way. Um, so what I'll do now is turn this over here and just randomly do another turn. And this will work out well because I don't want all of these in. Whatever you do, make sure it doesn't go like that. So now this is in. This is in. So I've got one. Oh, I just have one that's, that's in. So it really didn't change that too much. Let's get this back over here then. Let's go ahead and turn it like this and see what happens. Nope, this is bandaged. This is not. Turn it over here. And still nothing. So right now I'm just kind of fishing around. And what I'm quickly finding is that I seem to be stuck in something of a trap. So I got these, I've got uh, this that's in, and still I just have one that's in. So let's turn it like this and see what we've got here. This is in, this is in, this is in, and this is in. So I've got four that's in, but that's not gonna work, is it? Because I can't have four in and four out and have all of these in over here. So what I might do is turn this over here, turn it like that for the purposes of seeing if I can shake things up a little bit. And that's not gonna work. So this is a situation where they're all out, which is good. It helps me reconfigure things a little bit. Turn this over here, in, in, and then I've got this out over here. And this is something of a trap because I'm not able to get out of that. So what I need to do is I need to free up this side actually. I'll turn this over here. I've just got one in over here. And I've got none in. So what I'm doing is I'm just turning things almost randomly here. Move this like so, turn this here. I managed to get it to where I have three here, three here, and one out. And here I've got one, two, three. I've got one, one in, two in, three in, and four in. So that's what I want. So it's really just a matter of coordinating that. Now the question is, can I put all of my four that are in next to and on top of each other? I might not be able to do that, in which case everything will be undermined, so to speak. So these two are here. I've got to get the other two that are in, which is here and here, on top of each other. This needs to move down to here. Well, I can do that. I can move this here, and this will move down to here in the proper position. So this has to move next to this one down here, 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R. So this is good over here. And now I want to move these two that are in next to each other. I can do that by doing a corner swap. 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R, turn, turn, 2R, UI, 2R, U, 2R, in you go, and that's, that's all fine. So now coordinate this to where the three that are in are right next to each other. I'll just go like this, and there you have it. So all we have to do is this motion here. We can't from here, so we have to do some shape-shifting moves to try to bring it back. Shape-shifting moves here because I can't touch these and these are on top of each other. Occasionally, you might get four that are in, but you cannot coordinate it to where they're on top of each other. You have to start again. So let's go ahead and just do some shape-shifting moves until we manage to get this back. I can look to see which ones are off. It's going to be these guys here. So let's corner swap and corner swap them back. 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R. Turn, turn. 2R, UI, 2R, U, 2R. Now this is a lot like just shuffling the deck, so to speak. 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R. Turn, turn. 2R, UI, 2R, U, 2R. And I just keep shuffling until eventually it comes, comes by, but didn't work this time. Now again, instead of doing it, instead of swapping these two to try to turn these, let's do it from this angle because uh, halfway through when I swap it once, I'll still have this available to me. 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R. Turn, turn, 2R, UI, 2R, U, 2R, turn it back, 
Nope. Tuar U. Tuar UI. Tuar. Turn. Turn. Tuar UI. Tuar U. Tuar. Turn it back. And not yet, but this one seems to be working. So this one seems to have a very stable configuration. Okay, what I may want to do is maybe turn it like this and then do corner swapping here and turn it back just to shake shake it up a little bit. To R U, to R U I, to R, turn, turn, to R U I, to R U, to R, turn it back. To R U, to R U I, to R, turn, turn, to R U I, to R U, to R, turn it back. So let's see if that did indeed shake things up. Move this like so. Then I'm going to move this back in like here. Ah, and it did that. So all I did was I just moved things around and it put these in the configuration that I want, and now this can turn. So one turn. These are in. This is in. This is in. And this is in. So now it's just a matter of doing our two by two by three solve. Here's the red, um, move that in place. So I've got my middle here. Whatever, whatever gives me red and green on the bottom, is it gonna be the white one? Um, yeah, that gives me red and green on the bottom. But these are all messed up. So what I'm gonna do is start moving these up to bring it back down. To R, U, to R, U, I, to R. Now I don't care about the shape shifting at all because I've, got, I've converted this into a two by, uh, two by three. So this, this uh, red, white, and blue, this is gonna be the red side over here. And so if blue is back here, it actually has to come here. So this will come down to here. 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R. Takes my placement issues out. This is now back where it needs to be. Move it here and you can see this is all fine. So now the white, white and red, this is also fine as well. So this remaining white comes down to here, which is the green one. 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R. We're doing okay here. Now we get the top part here. Now notice we have parity here, placement issues here. The good thing about this is now we don't have any discernible edges, which means I can do a opposite edge swap, but there's no edges to swap. All that's gonna do is it's gonna cause placement issues back here. It's gonna bring this middle back. So 2R, 2U, 2R, 2U, 2R, 2U. Didn't do anything to anything down here, but it did swap these back. So let's see what's in place. This is in place. So I'm gonna eventually need to move this to here. So let's go ahead and swap these two. Then I'll swap these two. To R U, to R U I, to R, turn, turn. To R U I, to R U, to R, move it back. So now we swap this to here and this to here. To R U, to R, UI 2R, turn, turn, 2R, U, 2R, UI 2R, move it back, and once again it's solved. So give that a try. It's actually very doable. This is bandaged, this is bandaged, it's a completely bandaged up puzzle. But uh, those are the techniques. Basically what you're going to want to do is try to get into a situation, just treat it like a 2x2x3. Two by two by get a situation where you have 4 in and 4 out, and that you have everything here in except for 1. Uh, anytime you end up with a bandaged area, just go ahead and do corner swaps and corner swap it back. As long as you get it into a shape shifting position, then out of a shape shifting position, you reshuffle it and rechange the, uh, uh, the bandaging components. It might seem you have to do it an endless number of times, just kind of reconfigure things a little bit, but eventually you'll get it back, and that's how you solve it. Um, so uh, hopefully that helped. Again, give it a try before converting it into a fully functional one, which if need be if you'd like I can show you how to do that thanks for watching